pleased to have sitting right to my left the Pulitzer Prize winning syndicated columnist George Will. Good to see you, sir. Glad to be with you. Thanks for being here. Um, right off the bat, what do, what do you figuratively, literally, what do you think of the Hall of Fame class that was announced to go into Cooperstown? Uh, all three are deserve to be in. All three have some suspicion of performance enhancing drug use in their background, if you count cocaine in the case of Tim Raines. What's most important is that we're, the resistance to those who are thought to be, known to be, suspected of having used performance enhancing drugs is weakening, partly because as a younger generation mm. of writers become eligible with the 10 year qualification to vote on the Hall of Fame, the younger writers who did not cover the steroid era seem to be less uh, put off by mm -hmm. PED use. Well, what about the idea as well that uh, Bud Selig uh, gained enshrinement yesterday and uh, folks like Tony LaRusso, who I'm, I know you know uh, well, um, you could say that if performance-enhancing drugs was used by some of his players, Jose Canseco, we all know about that. Mark McGuire is no longer on the ballot because of it. That maybe his win total was somehow enhanced because of the performance-enhancing drug use by the players who helped win World Series. If those folks are in, why shouldn't we open the doors for the guys who actually put a needle in their well, body? Well, there are two separate cases here. I think the case of Tony La Russa, who managed these players, that seems to me too many removes. The responsibility is with the player. We mm -hmm. shouldn't deny them their moral agency. Bud Selig uh, tried hard and met steadfast resistance from the Players Association under Don Fear and Gene Orza, who at that point thought of themselves less as lawyers for very rich clients than they did the civil rights lawyers. <laughs> they were somehow defending privacy at the cost of the integrity of the game. So I, I think Bud Selig, who is a very good friend of mine, uh, tried hard and could not move the union until public pressure, partly from Congress, uh, caused the union to move. What's most interesting about this vote, it seems to me, is the Hall of Fame Museum. And I think people ought to understand that's not run by Major League Baseball. Correct. It's its own entity. The Hall of Fame's official title is National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. That seems to distinguish between the museum, which is artifacts and keeps a record of the history of the game, and the hall itself, the actual physical space where the plaques are. It seems to me the Hall of Fame has to make a decision and has to do it now. Is it just a museum that is a record of certain part of American culture, or is it also a shrine, which is a very different thing, a kind of place of reverence? Now, I, kn I know and I, I assume the, the people uh, hearing us know that the ballot instructions to the baseball writers who, after 10 years, become eligible to vote on this, the instruction says you're supposed to consider character, integrity, sportsmanship. So there's an ethical dimension to this. How important is it? And do they want to say, going forward, because of the steroid era, maybe we should be just a museum? That's not a trivial thing. It's no. an important thing to be. It is. If you have a museum of science and industry, you tell the record of American science and industry. If you have a museum of baseball, you tell the story. And you can't tell the story of American baseball without uh, Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens, argu arguably the best hitter and pitcher ever, some people say. So, as I say, the, the Hall of Fame has to make a decision. What is it? Well, uh, if you, George Will, could wave your hand as a baseball czar, if you will, mm -hmm. which one would you choose? I well, don't know. <laughs> I'm, gen I'm genuinely, I'm genuinely, it right. seems to be someone who isn't conflicted, isn't taking this seriously. Mm -hmm. By its moral dimension, the, the Hall of Fame is saying success that isn't achieved honorably isn't real success. And it's a big step if, the, if something as important as the Hall of Fame, no other sports Hall of Fame is taken as seriously as this, it, it is going to say, well, somehow we're going to blur the line between honorable success and not. Take the case of Fred McGriff. 493 home runs, not a taint of suspicion that he used At PEDs. All. If he had used them, he'd have been well over 500 home runs. 
and he'd be in the Hall of Fame. Instead, this week, he got 21% of the vote, far short of the 75% needed to get in. He's paid a terrible price. So what about the voting? Um, Because it seems to me a highly flawed system. I don't know how to fix it. I mean, I mentioned at the top of the show today how the Pro Football Hall of Fame does it, where the list is pared down to a manageable number, manageable enough that a a group of selectors can meet together and not spend a week discussing. It's just a new one-day sit-down where people can pound the table on behalf of some and maybe sway votes in another direction. How would you categorize the voting system for the Baseball Hall of Fame right now, George? Well, I, I, I think looking for perfection in the way we select presidents or Hall of Fame members <laughs> yes. is, is, a, is a non-starter. Uh, I would not restrict the writers to merely listing 10. Put all the people down who, as they become eligible, retired for five years, are of Hall of Fame caliber, and let it rip. Mm-hmm. You could, I suppose, say you don't want to get have a class of 10 to get in. You could say, well, the top five vote-getters will have a cutoff there, mm-hmm. and those who got sixth and less can try again. Wait another day. Plus the idea, to me, that someone like Jorge Posada gets one and done that he doesn't, on his first attempt, get enough votes to stay on a ballot after his career, that it would not be reviewed again, I guess, what, for another 15 years it won't be reviewed again after his bowling off the ballot? Yes, but he falls off the ballot because he didn't even get 5%. Again, you got to get the 75%. Sure, but I mean, isn't that somewhat unfair that he's thrown into a pool of about 50 guys and and he doesn't get the 5% and thus... His entire career does not get reviewed for another decade and a half. That seems to me a little bit draconian. I don't think it is. It seems to me a decade and a half for reflection. Look at how mature reflection elevated Tim Raines. People said, well, he's out from under the shadow of Ricky Henderson. Let's rethink this. Mm -hmm. And it took him about 10 years in his case. Mm -hmm. Might take 15 years to get to the Veterans Committee or someone else to rethink it. But that's Mm -hmm. fine. But if you can't even get 5%, I see no point in continuing without a hiatus. Well, before I let you go, George, because I know this is a very busy week, very yeah. busy day today and tomorrow. What about the game today? The game today, we just saw how the game seven of the World Series, Cubs versus Indians, the whole country was captivated by a baseball game in a way that we haven't yeah. seen for some yeah. time. What about now that that, I guess, the Cubs winning is no longer a novelty and now baseball moves into another season how do you how do you see the national pastime as it's known the national right pastime now? has never been healthier the steroid parenthesis in the history of baseball has been closed there will always be people trying to cheat there'll be bad chemists and good chemists trying to defeat the bad chemists with detection devices but the game is clean competitive balance i was a member of the in 1998 of the blue ribbon commission on baseball economics We tried to change the economic model of baseball to improve competitive balance. We got it. You've got uh, competitive teams all over now. Uh, The fans are coming out, uh, 75 million or so people. More people go to Major League Baseball games than NFL, NBA, and National Hockey League games combined. New ballparks everywhere. And baseball, let's be frank, is going to be helped going forward by the NFL's difficulties and the NFL difficulties relating to concussions and all the rest cannot be solved in my judgment. Good to have you here, George. Enjoyed thank it. you very much. I enjoyed this too immensely. Good. Thank you for coming on inauguration week. No, no less as well. The Rich Eisen show weekdays at noon Eastern on audience.